Okay, so we, we invite him through Shema, and also we ask him to be in our midst. So I will um, ask, ask uh, Sister Shadula to go ahead and uh, sing Shema to invite Abba into our midst. Shema Israel, Yahuwah Eloheinu, Yahuwah Echa, love Yahuwah with your whole heart. With your being and all of your strength, love your brother as you love yourself. For you are blessed when you go out and blessed when you come in. Yahuwah, he will be with you all the days of your life. Oh, Shema Israel, Yahuwah, Eloheinu, Yahuwah, Hallelujah, Shema Israel. Yahuwah our Alehim, Yahuwah Ehad. We thank Abba for that. Um, Sister Shannon, you have to lead us in prayer. I got you. Yeah. Abba, yeah, we thank you for this day. Abba, we thank you for this time that you've allowed us to come together to get into your word, Abba, to just spend time with one another as a family, as a community. Abba, we ask that your Ruach Kakadesh leads us in the scriptures, Abba, and help us gain understanding on where you would, on the things that you desire to reveal to us, Abba. We pray that our hearts are in a position to receive what it is that you want us to understand, know, or learn, um, and that you would just be with us in this lesson. In Yeshua's name we pray. Abba. Amen. And me, me, thank you so much, my um, sister. Um, yesterday, our Torah portion. Oh, before I go into that, let me welcome you uh, to Torah the Way International. Uh, we are on YouTube and Facebook. We enjoy you to actually search us out in your in our um, YouTube and in our um, Facebook. And I believe that you will richly be Baruch. Um, once again, I welcome you this evening to the conclusion of the, our Torah portion, which is Ted Zavi, Ted Zavi, you shall command. Um, yesterday we are able to look into what Abba asked Moshe to command. What did Abba ask Moshe to command? And why did he ask him to command? Last week, um, we saw how Abba lay it to Moshe and Moshe lay it before the children of Israel that you raise up a contribution for me. But that contribution has to burn out of those who will give me the contribution willingly from their heart. I'm not forcing them to give me the, to raise up the contribution, but for them to give it to me from the depth of their heart. And we made to understand that this contribution because it was raised 
It was a contribution that was raised by Abba. For Abba. It has to be set apart. It's prized. It's, it's so prized. When we look at uh, uh, 25, speak to the children of Israel that they take up contributions for me from everyone whose heart moves him, you shall take up my contribution. Everyone whose heart moves him. And Abba laid down the kind of contribution that is expecting from the children of Israel. You raise it up. That is to say that it has to be prized. It is something that is going to cost you. But that is what I want. So, and the raise of this offering for Abba to start and to com to complete Kenuha. Then Abba did not stop only there. Okay. Abba also requested the furnishing of the Kenuha. The Kenuha has to be furnished. And Abba lay it out. What he's expecting from the children of Israel to furnish the Kenuha. Now, not only that, you have to understand that Abba continually in verse 8, he said, and they shall make me a mikdash, and I shall dwell in their midst. That means that without the mikdash, Abba will not dwell. But he said, you are to make me a mikdash, exactly the mikdash from Shamayi. You are to make me the same one so that I can dwell in your midst. So Abba love to reside in our midst. Then the clinch, according to all that I show you, the pattern of Mishkan and the pattern of all the furnishing make it exactly. And in this place, Abba will not take anything apart from what he wants exactly. It is not what we want, but what Abba wants. And it's a continuation of Abba's requirement. It's a continuation of Abba direction in verse 26, sorry, chapter 26, Chapter 27, which we studied yesterday, chapter 28. We saw how Abba here. Abba said, and you shall command. You shall command the Israelites to bring you a clear oil of press. Only for the life so that the lamps may be kept burning. Yesterday, I labeled the point of the meaning of press or beating oil. If you look at uh, chapter 25, when Abba was given instruction, he just mentioned oil. He did not give what kind of oil that he suspected from there. But here in uh, 27, Abba was so specific. He was so specific to tell them that I want a pure oil, a very clear oil, unadulterated oil, the oil that is not mixed with anything. That is what I want. A smitten oil, an oil that you are going to take out, you know, by pounding the fruit and i gave you a lot of illustration yesterday that you pound something in the mortar and like when you pound yam in the mortar it's going to bring out the best so and i also gave illustration that um when you when you boil 
um, the seed, the palm kernel. You boil it. You boil the palm kernel. Now there are two ways that they, that is being done. One that we match on it to bring out the oil. But the second one is that they will pound it. So when they pound it, they now flitter it. And when they flitter it, it will bring out a very clear oil. That is what Abba was asking the children of Israel to do. You have to pound it, you have to squeeze the oil to come out pure. And when we look at when we look at when we look at the meaning of that, it simply means that Abba is emphasizing his kodeshness that you cannot bring anything that is not clean to me. I want something that has to be, that we go through that process that is going to be clean. And it's a reflection of our life also, because Abba was about to ordain Aharon. He was about to consecrate Aharon to himself so that Aharon will be the um the um Kohenim Hagador. Aharon will be a Kohenim Hagador unto him, the high priest. What you call the chief priest, the head of the priest. So his ordination is quite different even from his own children. It's quite even different from the Kohenim. So Abba lay out instructions that Moshe ought to follow. And don't forget, Abba always remind Moshe, you must do it exactly the way I give you, I instructed you on the Mount Sinai. I'm not going to take anything less than that from you. You will do it exactly the way I wanted it to be done. So Abba gave a very clear instructions to Moshe to do exactly. And he laid down what he's expected from him. And we saw how he laid it down, you know, um, precept by precept, I mean, precept by precept of what he's expecting um, for the truth for Moshe to ordain, you know, um, Aharon, not only that, the furnishing, all the equipment that is needed in the Kenoha, exactly the way he gave it to him, exact pattern. And we saw how he's going to make the breast pl plates, the, the, the breastplate of rarely, of righteousness, that is going to contain urim. And I said to you that urim simply means that it um is something that you, you will put down to make an inquiry you um from Abba. Um, that weed was a very good example of that. He will put Urim down and ask Abba, can I go to this war? And Abba will say, go. If I go, are you going to win this war for me? Abba will say, yes. Sometimes Abba will say, no, wait. So the, the breastplate of righteousness. Yesterday, I was able to, I was giving us why Abba said it has to close to his heart with the names of the children of Israel, each sons of Yaakov was actually inscribed in that great place. And I said yesterday also that we have 12 tribe of Israel that are supposed to be there. And also in the book of Revelation, also the gate, the 12 gates, and I said, well, we don't have the gate of the Christians. 
We don't have the gate of the Judaism. We don't have the gate of um, Buddhism. No, we have 12 gates that are that meant for the children of Israel. So and we saw how Moshe actually did that to honor the commandment of Abba, to be guided by the word of Abba. Moshe did exactly how Abba instructed him to do. And not only that, we see what entails in that garment. You see the beautiful um, gold, pure gold, pure gold. Pure gold are very, very expensive. Now, in South Africa, I think the carat, the gold carat of South Africa is between 26 and 27. Yeah, which is very close to the pure that Abba is requesting for. So it's a pure gold. Everything that was in that furnishing was actually pure we have the precious stones precious stones to some extent i think some rabbi said it is difficult to even give an accurate description of these precious stones but then abba told us because he is an elohim of beauty in revelation we saw that the street in Shamayim was paved. I mean, it's paved with gold, pure gold, pure gold. Every corner of, of the road in Shamayim was paved with gold, pure one. Not just, you know, when you have seen, I don't know whether we have seen a rough gold. When you bring a rough gold from the ground, it's dirty. It's so dirty. But it, it still retained that color. But by the time it goes through fire, it purifies. It takes away all the dead from it. And it makes it pure, so beautiful that you will fall in love with it. So that is the kind of the thing that Abba requested. Because Elohim of Israel is Elohim of beauty. He loved beauty. He appreciated beauty. Beauty in Kodeshim. Beauty in righteousness. He loved it. Look at the creation. The creation was filled with his beauty. Sometimes you go out and you see different uh, today. Um, a friend of mine, Miss Miss Mecca, sent me, she sent me a picture of peacock you know so beautiful i love it so much when she sent me those pictures i was just looking at them when they flap out <laughs> their wings the fit the it brings out different pictures beautiful pictures so alahim of israel is alahim of beauty in kodeshim and he wants us to walk in the beauty of his Kodeshim. When you look at all this, you will see that, that Abba does not play with the issue of cleanness. He doesn't play with issue of, um, of you know, separateness. Set apart, set apartness. He doesn't play with it. That is why he told the children of Israel to raise contribution. The contribution that is set apart for him. Because he set apart Yahusha HaMashiach to send him so that he can redeem us back to him. It cost him his only Yahid. It cost Yahweh, his only Yahid, because the Torah was broken, because he loved to live in our midst. So we have seen that how Abba laid it down 
um, of what is expected, the furnishing, the office of he created, the office of the office of um, priesthood for uh, Aharon and his sons, the office of high, uh, of the office of um, Kohenim Hagadol. He created the office of Kohenim Hagadol for Aharon and his children. That's, that that simply means that he set them apart from other people in the in in Israel. As I said, that Moshe was the bearer of the covenant. He inherited the covenant of Abraham. So that made Moshe um, a leader. Moshe, a leader, make him so different, so set apart. So, and being a leader, Abba instructed him, gave him commandment to ordain Aharon as Kohenim Hagadon, and to ordain his children. So Abba created the office and the function of that office. And Abba laid it out everything that every instruction that was given to moshe abba lay it out what it meant the breath place what it represents that simply means that aharon cannot just go to the kodeshim of kodeshim i mean abba i mean uh aharon cannot go to uh kodesh of kodeshim to you know atone for the children of israel so he has to go in a very beautiful garment, in his garment, for him to go before Abba, for the children of Israel. So we are going to conclude and go into the role of beauty and splendor in serving Allahim. The role of beauty and splendor in serving Allahim. And we have seen that in Exodus 28, verse 4, he said, These are the garments they are to make a breastpiece, an effort, a rope, a woven tonic, a turban, a sash. They are to make this sacred garment for your brother Aharon and his son. They may so so they may serve me as Kohenim. Abba give a clear description of what that garment is supposed to look. Okay. And it's not even saying that so that they may serve the children of Israel. He says, so that they may serve me. I set them apart so that they may serve me. Okay. That we translate into the children of Israel. When this, when they, when he goes in on behalf of the children of Israel to carry their sin, even up to the sin of the gift that they will bring to Abba. So he will go before them to, to, to make atonement for the children of Israel. And he has to go in the Kodeshim in the holiness, in the set apart, only unto Yahuwah Elohim of Israel. And we have seen that. So one of these best place is of that of judgment. And the, bre the, the breast place is associated with Uri. A judgment? And the judgment is not just only, you know, is is to judge them, to appease their sin before Abba, to come before Abba on their behalf. So Aaron was set aside for that function. Let's go to Exodus twenty nine. Exodus twenty nine. Now, Abba has actually set them apart. Office has been created for Aharon 
and his children. And now, Abba is now going to give them the tax, the function of that office. So you cannot be, you can't create an office without giving the occupier of that office function. So we are going to see the function, the task that Abba laid before Moshe to Kadosh Aharon for the service of Yahuwah. So let's read Exodus 29. Um, how many? Okay, it's about uh, 46. Okay, we are going to divide it as Exodus 29. Sister Shannon, can you read Exodus 29 from verse 1? From verse 1 to um, 15. And this is the thing that thou shalt do unto them to hollow them, to minister unto me in the priest's office. Take one young bullock and two rams without blemish, and unleavened bread and cakes unleavened tempered with oil, and wafers unleavened anointed with oil. Of wheat and flour shalt thou make them. And thou shalt put them into one basket and bring them in the basket with the bullock and the two rams. And Aaron and, Aaron and his sons shall bring unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, and thou shalt wash them with water. And thou shalt take the garments and put upon Aaron the coat and the robe of the Aphod and the Aphod and the breastplate and gird him with the curious girdle of the Aphod. And thou shalt put the mitre on his head and put the holy crown upon the mitre. Then th shalt thou take the anointing oil and pour it on his head and anoint him. And thou shalt bring his sons and put coats upon them. And thou shalt gird them with girdles, Aaron and his sons, and put the bonnets on them. And the priest's office shall be theirs for a perpetual statute. And thou shalt consecrate Aaron and his sons. And thou shalt cause a bullock to be brought before the tabernacle of the congregation. And Aaron and his sons shall put their hands upon the head of the bullock. And thou shalt kill the bullock before Yahuwah by the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And thou shalt take of the blood of the bullock and put it upon the horns of the altar with thy finger. And pour all the blood beside the bottom of the altar. And thou shalt take all the fat that covereth the inwards, and the cow that is above the liver, and the two kidneys, and the fat that is upon them, and burn them upon the altar. But the flesh of the bullock, and his skin, and his dung, shalt thou burn with fire without the camp. It is a sin offering. Thou shalt also take one ram, and Aaron his son shall put their hands upon the head of the ram. Okay. Um, Sister Shadula, can you read from 16 to um, 16 to 25? No, sorry. Read 16 to 27. And you shall slaughter the ram, and you shall take his blood and sprinkle it all around the altar and cut the ram in pieces and wash its entrail and its legs like and place them upon 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 its pieces and on its head you shall burn the entire ram on the altar it is a burnt offering to yahweh it is a sweet fragrance an offering made by fire to yahweh and you shall take the second ram and amaron and his son shall lay there hands on the head of the ram and you shall slaughter the ram and take some of its blood and put it on the tip of the right ear of Aharon and on the tip of the right ear of his sons, on the thumb of their right hand and on the big toe of their right foot and sprinkle the blood all around on the altar. And you shall take some of the blood that is on the altar and some of the anointing oil and sprinkle it on, on Aharon and on his garments. 
and his sons and on the garments of his sons with him. And he and his garments shall be Kodesh, and his sons and the garments of his sons with him. And you shall take the fat of the ram, and the fat tail, and the fat that covers the entrails, and the appendage of the li on the liver, and the two kidneys, and the fat on them, and the right thigh, it is for a ram of ordination. And one loaf of bread, and one cake made with oil, and one thick cake from the basket of the unleavened bread that is before Yahweh. And you shall put all these in the hands of Aharon, and in the hands of his sons, and you shall wave them, a wave offering before Yahweh. Then you shall take them from their hands, and burn them on the altar as a burnt offering, as a sweet fragrance before Yahweh. It is an offering made by fire to Yahweh. Yes, um, Sabola, thank you. Can you read from 28 to uh, 46? What chapter? Uh, chapter 29. Mm -hmm. Chapter 29. Yes. Um, all right, from verse 28. Yes. And it shall be from the children of Israel for Aaron and his sons by a law. Um, by law forever. For it is a contribution, and it is a contribution from the children of Israel, from the slaughters of their peace offering. Their contribution to Yah, and the set apart garments of Aaron are for his sons after him to be anointed in them and to be ordained in them the priest from his sons in his place put them on for seven days when he enters the tent of appointment to attend in the set apart place and take the ram of ordination and cook its flesh in a set apart place and Aaron and his sons shall eat the flesh of the ram and the bread that is in the basket by the door of the tent of appointment. And they shall eat those offerings with which the atonement was made to obtain them, to set them apart, but let a stranger not eat them because they are set apart and if any of the flesh of the ordinations offerings or of the bread be left over until the morning then you shall burnt up what is left over it is not eaten because it is set apart and so you shall do to aharon and his sons according to all i have commanded you seven days you shall ordain them and prepare a bull each day as a sin offering for atonement and you shall cleanse the slaughter place when you make atonement for it and you shall anoint it to set it apart for seven days you shall make atonement for the slaughter place and set it apart and the slaughter place shall be most set apart whatever touches the slaughter place is to be set apart you want me to continue yes to the end oh, okay. the and this is what you prepare on the slaughter place two lambs 
a year old daily, continually. Prepare the one lamb in the morning and the other lamb you prepare between the evenings and one tenth of an ephah of flour mixed with one fourth of a in of pressed oil and, um, and one fourth of a in of wine as a drink offering with the one lamb and prepare the other lamb between the evenings and with it prepare the grain offerings and the drink offering as in the morning for a sweet fragrance and offering made by fire to Yahweh, a continual ascending offering for your generations at the door of the tent of appointment before Yah, where I shall meet with you to speak with you, and there I shall meet with the children of Israel, and it shall be set apart by my esteem and I shall set apart the tent of appointment and the slaughter place. And Aharon and his sons I set apart to serve as priests to me. And it shall dwell in the midst of the children of Israel and shall be their, and shall be, and shall be their Elohim. I take 45 again, verse 45 again. And I shall dwell in the midst of the children of Israel and shall be their Elohim. And they shall know that I am Yah, their Elohim, who brought them up out of the land of Mizraim to dwell in their midst. I am Yah, their Elohim. Hallelujah. You see, Hallelujah. something that actually struck me is that everything Elohim created or create in his physical world help us to understand his spiritual mind now look out the details the clear details in structure that abba gave to set apart aharon we will call it in our in, in in a very paganistic word rituals it is not rituals abba gave details of what to be expected let's look at 40 let, let look let's let's see from 41 and he said and prepare the other land between two two lambs and prepare the other lambs be, between the evenings and and with it prepare the grain offering and the drink offering as in the morning for sweet or fragrant as offering made by fire to yahuwah a continual bond offering for your generation at the door of the tent of appointment before yahuwah where I shall meet with you to speak with you. Why would Abba go to that extraneous journey to meet with the children of Israel? That simply means that when they are not being separated, when all these are not being carried out exactly the way it ought to be carried out. Abba will not present. Abba will not reveal himself in their midst. So for them not to die, for them to be a separate people unto him, he has to give out a clear and details, every dot, details instruction to Moshe on what to do and not only giving that details instruction but they have to do it exactly the way he wanted it to be done not Moshe way not Aharon way not the children of Israel's way let's let's take a minute and look at our world today 
are we guiding the commandment, the instruction, exactly the way he spelled it out for us? Are we setting ourselves apart for him? Because no uncleanness, no uncleanness we near Yahuwah, Elohim of Israel. The book of Habakkuk, Prophet Habakkuk said, his ass is too pure, too pure to be sin. That simply means that his ass is too pure to behold you breaking his commandments, breaking his Torah, and say, well, that is it. Yahusha said that through Brother Shaul, that when we have done this once and Yahusha share his blood, that was done in ignorance. But if you continue to do it, then there is no more bond offering. There is no more sacrifice. No more bond offering. For the punishment. Look at what Abba is saying. Continual bond offering for you. Don't, don't forget that the ordination of Aharon took him seven days, seven good days to ordain Aharon. He was going through process of purification for good seven days. Just for him to be fit to stand before Yahuwah. Do you imagine that? Have you ever considered that? It took him seven days, seven good days. Abba was, he was, cons I mean, Moshe was going according to instruction that Abba gave it to him to set him apart before Abba. And why, why, why uh, Abba has to go to this to set apart Aharon? Then you have to look, you have to cast your mind back to when uh, ch children of Israel in 19, when they broke the commandment of Abba, when they worship, when, when, when Abba, I mean, when uh, Aharon instructed, instructed the children of Israel to bring their earrings, their golden earrings to make a golden image so aharon has to be sanctified he has to be clean he has to be clean thoroughly for him to be able to stand on behalf of the children of israel before yahuwah the creator of heaven and shamayim who cannot withstand uncleanness Be ye separate. That is what Yahuwah said. Be ye separate as I am separate. Be ye kadosh as I am kadosh. So anything less than kadosh, Abba will not accept it from us. And I, I used to say, yes, Yeshua, Yahusha came to do his own part. to restore us back to the Torah. You have to do your own part. Your part is to live, to be a perpetual bunny offering before Abba. Look at it, perpetual bunny offering. He said, 42, a continual bond offering for your generations at the door. A continual, that is to say that something that is going to be repeated, repeated, that is me that our life must be a continual bond offering before Yahuwah. Our flame must be, our, our fire must be, I mean, the, the flame. We must be burning in Kodeshim for Abba. He said, a continual offering for your 
for your generations at the door of the tent of appointment before Yahuwah, where I shall meet with you to speak with you. You see, where I shall meet with you to speak with you. Has Abba changed? So <clears throat> Malachi said, Abba does not change. So if Abba did not change, simply mean that his word, as he said it to Moshe, is still standing today. If we are not a bond offering, if we are not continually standing before Abba as a Kodeshi, then that means that Abba will not dwell with us, Abba will not speak with us. Because this is his word. He said, where I shall meet with you to speak with you. And where I shall meet with the children of Israel, and I shall be made called Kadosh by my esteem. You know, there was a day I was talking to my um my 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 my, my rabbi, Dr. Uh, Shabbat, her name is Shabbat too. And we are talking about this, you know, the um the set apartness of Abba. And and I threw the question to her and I said that you know that it is common for people to say, Oh, Abba speak to me, Abba did to me, Abba did to me. And he said, Allah, he looked at me very she looked at me straight straightly. I know she's a rabbi, but I, I believe that that moment Abba spoke through him, through her. And he said, Look, right from the time Abba drove the children of Israel out of the land, he said, She said, according to her own understanding, that she doesn't speak to nobody. And I said, But if he doesn't speak to nobody, yeah, I know. No, she, she now said, well, you can maybe through his ruach, you can understand in the scripture. And he said, because look, the world people, we are so polluted, we are so corrupted with the world that he will have nothing to do with us for now. That was her comment. Okay, she spoke as a rabbi. But then when you look at here, he said a con that when I shall meet with you to speak with you, and there I shall meet with the children of Israel, and it shall be made kadosh by my esteem. That very place that he set aside, it has to be made kadosh by his esteem so that he can speak with the children of Israel. The children of Israel has to be set apart. For good seven days, Aharon was continually being purified. Certainly. Do you know? And the same thing when you, when you look at Shavuot, the day of Pentecost. Yahusha told the disciple, you stay here in this room. The Ruach Hakodesh will come unto you. So I will set you apart with Ruach, with my Ruach, before you go into the world. So they have to be, they have to, you know, stay in that room. And of a sudden, the Ruach came. And it's like a, a, a splitting fire. And it fell on all of them. It transformed them. It changed them. They became a set apart for the service of Yahusha. He set them apart. He set them apart with the Ruach. Do, do you know how long they've been in that place with fasting and prayer? All of them were filled with the Ruach, with the power of, 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 of um, Abba. And he said here, 
where I shall meet with you to speak with you. You have to set them apart. Aharon has to be set apart so that I can speak me with my people and speak to my people. And he said, and I shall kadosh the tent of the appointment. That is to say that after all the requirement has been met, when Moshe and Aharon has carried out his commandment exactly the way it's supposed to be done, the pattern, they have to follow the pattern exactly. No taking out, no addition. Because if they take it out or they add to it, they will die. He also continually giving Moshe to tell Aharon to be careful so that he will not die. That is why he has to have bed in the, you know, in his um, breastplate so that the, the, that bell will be ringing when he's going to the tent of appointment to meet Yahuwah. So when, don't, when they don't hear the sound of the bell, that simply means, I mean, when he's coming back, the bell will be ringing. But when, he, when they don't hear the sound of the bell, that means that something has happened. So they have to draw him out of that place because nobody can go there if you are not set apart or set aside. Look at it here. Aharon, for good seven days, Abba was fine tuning his life. Abba was fine-tuning his life. He was cleansing him, cleaning him for him to be able to, to, to meet with Yahuwah. And you know, I think there is, um, I read somewhere when one rabbi was making a commentary that when he enters into the Kodesh Kodeshim, when he made the bond offering, the smoke, that smoke will cover all that area. When the smoke cover all that area, then from that smoke, Aharon can see the gleams of Abba's presence. You remember in, um, at this second king, when Shalomon completed the building what happens when they did exactly the right they perform everything that was laid down in the torah what happened there was the presence of abba that filled the temple like a smoke that even the kohenim has to run out because they couldn't withstand the presence of abba when abba came so you have to see that Yahuwah Elohim of Israel is Kadosh. And he can only speak to us when we are Kadosh. I hear, yes. Yahusha came. But not for us to take the favor that was given to us. You know, unguided. So we, we saw here, and he said, because he loved to, to dwell in, in our midst. 45, and I shall dwell in the midst of the children of Israel, and I shall be their Elohim. Hallelujah. He said he will dwell in the midst of the children of Israel, and he will be their Elohim. Look at that. Do you want Yahuwah to dwell in you? Do I want Yahuwah to dwell in me? In the book of Revelation, he said, Yahusha is at the door, knocking at the, the door. If you open, he said, he and the Father will come in. And the same thing here. Look at 45. And I shall dwell in the midst of the children of Israel, and I shall be their Elohim. They have to be sanctified. They have to be clean. They have to take all the flesh 
all the dirtiness, all the lies, all the deception, everything that is not in tandem has to go away for Abba to dwell in our midst. For seven days, everything that can make Aharon not to be accepted was taken away. For good seven days. Because nothing, anything that remained in, in uh, Aharon will not make Abba to dwell, and they will not, Abba will not dwell in their midst, and they will not see the Elohim of Israel. You see, people don't really understand that as a leader or as a teacher that is being called or appointed, you have to completely dedicate and set yourself aside for the service of Abba. Because sometimes when the head is rotting, the whole body will be rotten. And that is why we have what we have in the um, in um, in Messianic movement and the Hebrew root movement, because it's not different from Judaism. It's not different. I'm not talking about Christianity. It's because it's out of the picture. But. Judai, um, but um, Messianic movement and the Hebrew movement resemble the uh, Nasraim. They're close to the Nasraim, but they are not Nasraim. So, because there's flatness there, it has turned to business. <laughs> it has turned to business. Every hour feast now is business. You have to register. If you don't register, you are not welcome. Now, tell me, how do you want Abba to be in the midst of that? You, when you look at the dance, in all this Mosaic movement, have you ever watched the ancient cultural dancing of the Europeans. If well, if you have watched it, in Russia, at least I have the privilege to be seen or that. It's not different. It's not different from what it seems to let, it, uh, what it seems as if it is to praise Abba. So, Abba will not be in that midst. It's just like where we obey the commandment to do the feast, but the feast has also been corrupted. The feast has been commercialized. It's commercial purpose. Here he said, and I shall dwell in the midst of the children of Israel, and I shall be their Elohim. Is Yahweh your Elohim? Is he my Elohim? Can I lay claim to that that he's my Elohim? Can you lay claim that he's your Elohim? Good seven days. Because he loved to dwell in our midst. Abba wants to dwell in our midst. But uncleanness, will not make him to dwell in our midst. Uncleanness will not make him even to speak to us. Sometimes when you, when you want to, when you want to walk this journey, I remember when, when I was in Christianity, when, if I want, well, by that time I don't understand, but then I, 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 I dedicate my life to fasting and prayer. Okay. I will go to the mountain. I will go to the mountain. I will separate myself from people who 
also were there to pray. I will separate myself. I will not join anybody. If I want to go into seven days fasting and prayer, maybe white fasting, I do that. In the evening, I will break with oranges or something like that. That is all for good seven days. When I finish that seven days, I will continue another seven days. And it's so painful to me now. The reason why it's so painful to me now was the fact that I thought I was doing that service for Abba. I don't know his name, but then in that set apartness, I see revelation, clear and clear revelation. In that set apartness, Abba will come and reveal the journey of my life. So when a lot of things are happening in my life, I have seen it. So, Abba wants us to set our now. I can't do that as I used to do again. I, I mean, I consider it like <laughs> like um like a body now. So, we we have to Abba want to be with, Abba want to be in our midst. Abba love to reveal Himself to us, but we are not ready to meet Abba. And when we are not ready to meet Abba, Abba also will not meet with us. He said that, and they shall know that I am Yahuwah. They are Elohim. You see? He said they will know. That just means that he will reveal himself to, to them. Now, we, we are on YouTube, we have not met one another physically. But time is coming when we are going to meet one another physically. And you say, oh, this is Brother Ola. I've seen Brother Ola. Now we say, oh, this is Sister Shadola. This is Sister Shannon. I've met uh, my sister. See, that is what Abba want. That is what Abba want to do. And they shall know that I am Yahuwah, their Elohim, who brought them out, out of the land of Mizraim to dwell in their midst. You have to look at where these people are coming from. They came out of the land of Pagan. They have to be set aside, completely including Aharon. So for Aharon to be um, Kohenim Hagadon, that is good. Aharon represents Yahusha HaMashiach. Yahusha became our high priest. Yahusha became our Kohen Hagadon. Now, but then Aharon was actually taking that position. So it, was, it took him seven good years, I mean, seven good days to cleanse him so that he would be able to stand before Abba. And so that Abba himself would be able to reveal himself to the children of Israel. Let's let's see the vision that Elohim gave to um, Ezekiel concerning the temple also, and the furnishing and the burnt offering, almost the similar, the same thing, same. Um, Sister Shadola, can you read Ezekiel for me, forty three fifteen? Mm -hmm. 
15. And the altar part is for a month high and four horns extending upward from the heart. You see, the description also of Yahuwah to the children of Israel for the third temple to be, no, I'm not talking of the temple that they are building now. No, I'm not talking about that. There's going to be, when Yahusha come, there will be a new temple there will be a new kahar when Yahusha come. When he's going to dwell, when we are going to fellowship, he will dwell in our midst in that temple. The Kodeshim, the lost house of Israel, those who guided the commandment of Abba, and plus the Gentiles who guided the commandment of Abba. So the temple that they are planning to build has nothing to do with Abba. The, as a, the temple that they will build is going to be the temple where if there's anybody called anti messiah I mean the 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 beast. That is where it's going to stay. Jerusalem has been tramped upon, and is going to play a harlot. Is 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 going to be a harlot city. It's not Rome. It's Jerusalem. But when Yahusha come. There's going to be a temple. Yahusha will dwell in our midst. He loves to do that. But how ready are we for Yahusha to dwell? Even right now in our lives, how ready are we for Yahusha to dwell in us through the Ruach HaKodesh? He cannot withstand flatiness in us, dirtiness in us. We have to be clean. We have to live a life that is pleasant unto him. As we have seen here, Abba love, he want to be in our midst. He want to dwell in our midst. Unfortunately, we are not experiencing that today. When you see the gathering of people, you expect, I mean, you know, most of the time, I will sit down, including myself too, I will sit down and say, Abba, why is it that you are not operating the way you operated during the, the time of emissaries? And you said that these signs will follow those who believe you. Up to today, I'm still waiting for Abba to, but I know that we are surrounded. And don't forget, they too also were surrounded by the same evil we are fighting today, but they never compromised. They took their stand. They didn't call wrong name. They didn't call wrong, they didn't use wrong word. Because most, most majority of this thing play out very well. I used to sit down and ask questions. Why are we not witnessing miracles? This the, the sign that are supposed to witness. Why is it that when we preach, when we teach, all what to do is to say, why is it that? The word of Abba never pierces our hearts. He never bring us down for us to sit down and say, no, this is wrong. Never. You go, people will just hear it like, you know, uh, a kind of inspirational message. 
and they will come out and start smoking, start doing whatever they are doing. But the first believers are not like that. The first believers also guided the Torah. And that is why they were able to triumphantly over the forces of darkness of their time, even though they killed them. We have not suffered. You and I have never paid any price. Nothing. We have in this country, we have everything to ourselves. Have you ever have, have, have you ever been punished because of your belief? No. None of us have. When we go through hardship, it has nothing to do with the scripture. I mean, it was it has nothing to do with the father. We go through hardship because of our belief. No. Most of most of them is caused by ourselves. But you have to look at you have to relate, start to study the life of those who are gone ahead of us. Study their lives. Brother Shaul was persecuted. The believers were persecuted because of Mashiach. They pay a high price. Abba said, my esteem, we came down into the house, in my esteem. My esteem, we, 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 we appear in their midst and i will dwell in them i will dwell with them i'd love to, to, to dwell with them look at when kefa was detained he was arrested they said the assembly gathered together in one accord and where their prayer was shaking they prayed for Peter to be released. He was released. Why is it that today our prayer is not being effective as those people? Have we ever sit down and look at that? Why do we most of the time we allow our thoughts, our thinking to cloud the judgment of Abba? Yeah, Yahuwah loves to dwell in our midst. He said, I will dwell in their midst. And they shall know that I am Yahuwah, their Elohim. He wants to reveal himself to them. He wants to let them know that he is Elohim of Abraham, their father, Elohim of Isaac, Elohim of Jacob, and Elohim of the children of Israel. He wants them to know, he wants the children of Israel to know him one by one. One to one. Today, we don't experience that anymore. Because everything has been mixed, syncretized. We refer to a lot of things. I've never seen Brother Shaul as brilliant, as brilliant as he was with Greek philosophy. I have never seen him quoting Greek philosophy. Never. He never deviated from the Torah. So why would their word will not be powerful? Because Abba loved to dwell in our midst. He want to dwell, he wants to reveal himself to us. He wants to let us know that he is our Elohim. We can boast, you know, and say. We have Yahuwah, Elohim of Israel, behind me. It's in with me, it's, it's in my, you know, in our midst. We don't, we cannot boast of that today. We cannot boast of that today. Let us live a kind of life that will make Abba to relate well with us. Let us make live a kind of life that will make Abba to want to dwell and be with us all the time. He loved that because we are his. He loved, he loved, we can see that here. He said, and I shall dwell. 
45. And I shall dwell in the midst of the children of Israel and shall be their Elohim. Israel is the only nation that you have that privilege. They are the only nation on earth to hear the voice of Abba. They are the only nation that Allah himself used his hand to write his Torah for them, his finger. They were the only nation that Abba raises Navi for. I'm not talking of the prophet. I'm talking of the Navi, the Navis, the Jeremiahus, the Yesayahus, um, uh, Eli, Eli, Eliyahu, Elisha. They are the only one. Don't you see how Abba loved them? And when he was not satisfied with that, let's see the book of John chapter one. When he's not satisfied with that. If you if you find it, please read it. Johanna, let's read from verse one. In the beginning was the word, and the word was yes. Elohim, and the word was Elohim. He was in the beginning with Elohim. All came to be through him, and without him, none, not even one came to be that came to be. In him was high, and the high was the light of men, and the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from Elohim whose name was Yohanan. This one came from a, for a witness to bear witness of the light, that all might believe through him. He was not that light, but that he might bear witness of that light. He was the true light, which enlightens every man coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came to be through him, and the world did not know him. He came to know his own, and his own did not receive him. But as many as received him, to them he gave the authority to become children of Elohim, to those believing in his name who were born not of blood, nor of the desire of flesh, nor of the desire of man, but of Elohim. And the word became flesh and pitched his tent among us. And we saw his esteem, esteem as of an only brought forth of a father complete in favor. Thank, thank you, my sister. Thank you. You see this, look at that verse 14. And the word became flesh and he pitched his tent. He pitched his tent among us. Go back to 40, 45. And I shall dwell in the midst of the children of Israel and shall be their Elohim. Here 14. And the word became flesh. Yahusha became flesh and pitched his tent among us, among his own children. Israel, did he pitch his tent with any other any other trade, any other tribe, ethnic groups, nation? No, he pitched his tent with the children of Israel. And we saw his esteem. And look at what Abba said here. Verse um 43. And there I shall meet with the children of Israel and it shall be made Kodesh by my esteem. Do you see it? The word of Abba is one. And we saw his esteem, esteem as of, of an only brought forth of a father, complete in favor and in truth. Abba loves to dwell in our midst. Yahusha pitched his tent with the children of Israel. He did not pitch his tent with any other people. He did not pitch his tent with any other nation. But still, yet the children of Israel blew it off. They did not know him. They did not recognize him. They did not pay attention to him. But still, yet. 
when we kadosh ourselves, when we set ourselves apart, Abba love to dwell in our midst. Abba love you. Abba love me. He want to house us. He want to dwell in our midst. He want to relate, he want to talk to us. But Abba will not talk to us in the midst of flittiness. We can only see the esteem of Abba when we set ourselves apart, when we guide his commandments, when we guide the Torah, when we do exactly as he has instructed us, exactly the way he instructed in Moshe to build Kenoha and the furnishing and the ordination of Aharon and his sons. He gave a detail, a master. Our Yahuwah is a master planner. Details oriented. And when you don't guide those instructions, you are finished. He always reminded Moshe, as I give it to you, as I spoke to you on the mountain, exactly you will do. You will carry out the pattern exactly. You must not alter it. Or you must not take out of it. And Moshe did exactly. Moshe did not have the word of it. So that is the meaning of Navi. Navi is someone who does not have the word of his own. See, Navi are different from the prophet. I already said that. English, the other realm of the spirit create that word. And the the prophet interpret the the mediums, they see visions all the time, fake visions, fake ones, fake. Their gods always speak to them. Always their God always speak to them. But we are dealing with Yahuwah, Elohim of Israel. We will give you detail. He, Moshe do not have any word of his own. And when you read right from the time Abba called him, Abba appointed him, Moshe. And Abba said to Moshe, and Abba said to Moshe, and Abba said to Moshe, tell the Aharon, tell the children of Israel. The only time perhaps was when his father-in-law came and he listened to his father-in-law. And I know the 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 other must be from, from Yahweh himself. Because Abba never countered that. But beside that, everything unto the time of his end is Abba said to Moshe, speak to the children of Israel. Because when we guide his commandments, then he also will equally speak to us, speak to our lives, speak to the life of our children, speak to the life of our family. And he's going to be our Elohim. He's going to be our Elohim forever and ever. There is no two way about it. He said, he said, and I shall dwell in the midst of the children of Israel, and I shall be their Elohim, and they shall know that I am Yahuwah, their Elohim. See how beautiful is that? He's going to dwell in them, and they will know that he is their Elohim. He is the one that brought them out of mystery, out of afflictions, out of slavery, because it's in their midst. I pray this evening, my sisters and my brothers, I pray that Elohim of Israel will guide us to walk in his path and his ways, to guide his commandment to do it exactly the way he wants us to do, so that we will, when we hear from him, we will know directly it's from him. Because Abba will not speak and say he doesn't speak again, no. And when Abba speak, he will back his word. 
because he said he his word is not going to fall down and he said his word will not when he sent his word his word will accomplish that which is not before that will come back to him so the word of abba don't fall to the ground you know when when he told the children of israel when he told abraham look at the time he said to abraham he said your children they will they will go to a foreign land and that nation will enslave them for 400 years and after that i will punish that nation did he not punish egyptians not only that he said you will come out with a great loot did the children of Israel not come out of the land of Messiah with a great loot? So let's look at that. But Abba word will never fall down. I think there's a portion in the scripture that, that says that he honored his word, even above his name. His word, Abba's word. So let us guide the commandment of Abba so that we will hear his voice he will dwell in our midst he will be our elohim let's not clear ourselves let's be clean before him let's purify ourselves everything that is in the stumbling block in our life let us pray that abba will help us to take it out of our lives so that we'll be able to see abba abba himself will dwell in our midst we thank Abba for the conclusion of this uh, Torah portion. And I'm sure we are Baruch, we are blessed with this evening. So Amen. I yield the floor for questions and uh, comments. I don't know. Where did I say? Yeah, I think we have Hallelujah. Uh, Hallelujah. I'm just, I'm just grateful. And it's just, it, these lessons, they always make me ask questions. Uh, they always make me ask questions like, Abba, you know, with everything that is going on, what, what more can I do to make sure that you dwell in my midst? To make sure, is there anything that needs to be removed? Is there anything that I need to add? Well, you know, just to stay on the right path. So I I like these lessons because they are thought provoking and they cause me to seek Abba. So hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just thank Abba for that. Yeah. Mm. Yes. Yeah. It's a very qu good question that we should ask Abba. You know, Abba, what do you want me to do? To to be perfect before you. What are those things that I need to take away? Or what are those things that you want me to add in the Torah that will make me to be complete before you? I think it's a, it's, um, um, it's a I mean, it's, 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 that should be our request every day when we go on our knees, when we pray, when we walk, when we study the Torah. Father, what else do you want me to do? What can I do? How will I please you? Yes, I will have place you, Abba. I want to please you. You know, it, when um, Sarah was our mother, was giving um, Hagar to Abraham, Abba never intervened. He didn't intervene. Okay, Even to the point where uh, Ishmael came and all that, he never intervened. It was after that, Abba, you know, called unto um abraham and said to him abraham walk before me and be perfect okay so um this journey is um is 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 a continuation of perfections okay and we have to go to realize that okay we made mistakes Abba, help me let me see where that mistake occurred let me correct it and we continue to move on. So thank you 
thank you so much for that comment. I appreciate it. Yeah. Other comments? <laughs> Sister Bola, Sister Hallelujah. Shadula. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. Um, when you thank you for the teaching anyway. Um and um, when you mention that Abba don't speak to anyone today. Yes. Mm. I agree in a part. Yes, ma'am. Because, to be honest, we are not Kodesh. Uh, our heart is uh, terribly the thought of our heart is so bad. It's like Isaiah that said he has unclean mouth. Yes. He's living in the midst of unclean people. Unclean, unclean people. Mm. Well, it's so, it's a kind of situation that makes somebody feel like what can i do and we should seek that is why the psalmist says that cleanse me he says you should examine him if there's any unrighteousness in him And a lot of time, a lot of time I turn my back to people when they say, God say, God say, God say. Actually, I don't know the God that speaks to them. So I cannot debate or argue it because there are many God and uh, suffering in the world that is not really the Elohim of Israel. Wow. We should just pray and trust him. Because and we should be thankful that he preserves his word even though he's been uh Is being authored by men, and uh, some things will change, and all of that. We still have bit by bit, and a lot of it anyway, of his yes. word that we can relate to. I also know one thing that he speak through the is he can speak to us through the dreams. If he cannot speak face to face, like the place that really got me during this time that the children of Israel were the, at the mountain top, was yes. the that they said they saw his feet and the yes. elders of Israel saw him. Yes. And said his feet is like, uh, what did they say? They describe what they saw, even yes. though they did not see, they didn't tell us that they saw everything, but they saw the part of him, his feet. That is so beautiful. That is so beautiful. That is so beautiful. And it's awesome. And uh, if they are still alive today, the memory can never, never leave them. Of course. The memory of that moment. And I believe that 
if we have a dream or a vision and we hear it is just the mercy of god mercy of elohim that that could even make him to to reveal himself to us in a dream or in a trance so i think i want to believe what uh you you you, you mentioned that your rabbi said and that is why we have a lot of people lying today and say and saying that almighty told them and all of that well some vision and some things will sometimes it look real to some people that we make them to really really believe that it's abba that is speaking but as you said probably a lot of time and 99 percent of time is not abba it could be their feelings or but i pray that Abba will help us, like Sister Shannon said. We should seek, we should seek him diligently. And we have to be serious with, with our relationship with him. We have to be very, very conscious working with him. We have to be attentive. We have to do everything to please him. If he's not going to speak to us, if he's not going to show us a vision, at least let us do our part. It will be this I'm saying to myself, because that statement hit me and it makes me to feel like wow. Wow. Thank you so much. I appreciate. Thank you. Yes, um, we, um, the world is so polluted mm. and the pollution is um, majority of people who are in this work are actually being affected by, by that pollution. And when you are affected with the pollution of the world, then Abba will not clearly make himself or speak to us. Because when we, if we read this, um, if we read clearly and interpret the standard of what is in the scripture, look, it took Aaron seven days to be clean, seven good days, every day continuously cleaning him before he'll be able to even stand. Now, look at, let's, let's, take a, let's take a glimpse into what is happening today. Satan has um, sent his spirit to the world and the spirit is the spirit of deception. Deception. To deceive and to lie. And sometimes, you know, when we are not careful, we will think it is Abba that is speaking to us. But when we take time to examine our life and we examine the scripture, we will know that, no, this is not the voice from Abba. So, we just like what you said, we have to be very, 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 very careful because the scripture said that Abba calls the Navi who say Abba say, he said, you said this when I did not say it. He said it. He caused them. He caused them. So when when Abba did not say something that you said, Abba said you are enemy of Abba because by your by yours, but at that what you are misleading people. That's misleading. He told in the book of Jeremiah. The prophet are saying peace, 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 when there is no peace. So they misled the children of Israel. So we one has to be very anything that I have discovered now that most of the time, whenever I want to even speak to you at all to correct you, 
he, 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 he diverts your attention to the scripture. He speaks to you through the scripture. So you can see his desire in the scripture. But unfortunately, we are not being careful. See? So my rabbi, Dr. Mrs. Uh, uh, Sabat, he said, Allah is nothing but the spirit of deception. I, I Look, I'm not saying I'm hearing anything. I don't hear anything. I don't know anything. But anybody that tell you is from, he say, she said, it's pure lies. Abba don't talk. Like the way that we say he talks. So we have to be very, 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 we have seen it. The standard is here in the scripture. It was after the cleansing. The clean, he has not even appeared to them. He was just giving the instruction that, okay, when you do this, when you clean yourself, then I will come into your midst and I will dwell in your midst. Then you will now know that I am Yahuwah. I'm different from other Elohim. I'm Yahuwah that brings you from the land of Mizraim, from affliction, from tribulation, from all that to the land. So thank you, Ma. Thank you for your contribution, Ma. This is very, very think in. Want to read, sorry, yes. one second. I want to read this part. Yes, sir. Before we continue to support, it says in verse chapter 23. Yes, sir. Verse 30, 21. Like I said, that we can do, which we should continue to do our part. And it says, be in verse 21, be on guard before him and obey his voice do not rebel against him for he is not going to pardon your transgression you see even yes. at that time he's still giving them warning yes to them to be on guard so thank you so much yes sir, yes, sir. I just want to give honor to the Father and thanksgiving for the lesson. Um, there's a lot here that I have observed for my own self. So thank you for bringing it out and um, for being obedient to present it to us. Uh, thank you. Thank you. I really, really appreciate all of you and for, for this contribution this is actually the ruach of understanding that is working among us and i'm so excited about that we really really bless abba for this evening teaching and i pray that abba will continue to open our hearts and our mind our mind to his word and to understand the torah perfectly more than what we teach thank you so much i call sister bola to Close for us. Prayer. Abba, we thank you so much. Thank you. We appreciate you. Thank you because you have given us your word. You want us to follow. You want us to guide and you want us to obey. Yes. We pray. You will help us. Yes. We know that our environment is really, really polluted. Yes. Enemy has polluted the atmosphere. Our hearts even get polluted. Like Isaiah said, Abba, we ask that you will help us. Yes. We ask that you will please Abba, Yahweh, help us. Yes. We are really in love with you. 
We love you with all our hearts. Yes. We love and we are willing to be and to do your will. Yes. Enemy is bragging and bullying daily. Yes. But we know, like you have said, that if we are willing, yes. Abba, we are willing. Yes. We ask that you will help us. Yes. We ask that you will draw us yes. close to yourself. Yes. Abba, cleanse us and make us worthy. Yes. Of your present. Yes. Abba, cleanse us and make us worthy worthy for your visitation yes let the blood of yahusha let it begin to wash us yes. from every form of uncleanliness yes. from every form of corruption yes every form of wickedness Yes. We come under the blood. Yes. You promise even if I was seen red like crimson. Yes. The blood of Yahusha will wash us yes. and make us whiter than snow. Yes. Abba, we ask that you will look on us and you will have mercy. You will not abandon us. You will not leave us in this situation. We know, Abba, you helped Peter when he was drowning. It was by faith as you asked him to come. And he stepped his feet on the water and was drowning. He cried for help. You help. We are crying for help. We are your children. We don't even we don't know how to make it right. We don't even know how to turn or where to turn. But you know everything, our Father. Yahuwah, help us. We put our hands into your hands. Yes. And we ask that your mercy, your mercy will lead us. Like the disciples told you at the garden, and you knew, Yahusha, that their spirit is willing. Yes. A lot of time, our a lot of time our flesh drag us behind. Yes. That we could not even boast of anything. We could not even use our hand to, to beat our chest that, yes, we are walking right or we are doing right. We are falling into so many mistakes and error. Abba, our hearts truly desire you. Please lift us up. Please save us. Yes, Abba. And we shall be saved. Yes. Abba, save us. Do not allow us to get drowned. Don't let the fire burn us. Don't let enemy rejoice over us. Abba saved us. Please save us. Have mercy on us. And saved us. Yes, we are not better than the, 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 the our our ancestors that you you deliver from from uh, Mistrahim, and they yes. walk no too far when they start complaining, start disobeying. Abba, we are not better than we are still women, and you said you know our form. 
you know that we are women. As we gather today, asking you to help us, help us. The situation is really, really tough these days. The distraction is on the high level. Yes. What our heart desire to do is not what we are doing. What we really love to do is not what we are doing. Abba, we ask you. Yes. He said, if you, if you are marking sin, who can stand? Mm -hmm. Please forgive us. Yes. Forgive us so many corrupt situations, so many terrible situation enemy create around us something we do not even plan for something we are not envisaging something we are not expecting so many for abba you are more than able mm -hmm. you are more than able yes you are our savior we look up unto you the author and the finisher of our faith that you will hold our hands. You will hold us. Yes. And help us to stand. Shabba. And keep moving. Not looking back. Please help us. Help us. And we plead that you will help us to the end. You will help us to the end. We're not going to look back. We're not going to get distracted. We're not going to follow this present world. Thank you, Abba. Thank you for your son, our brother, that you have used to speak your word. Bless him in return. Mm -hmm. Bless his home. Please bless his work. Bless his life. Bless all that is 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 all that concerns him. Everything. Bless him. Reward him abundantly. And as you have helped us to sit and listen all of us my sisters shadola shanon and myself we have set apart this time to hear your word we pray that we will not be hearers hearers only we shall be the dwara and as we do that which you want us to do, Abba, you promise you will bless us. Yeah. Our life is awaiting your blessing. Yeah. And praise is awaiting you in our mouth, from our mouth. Abba, bless us. Bless me, bless my two sisters here. Give us Praise reports, abundant of your praise reports, that we will continue to share your goodness. Every all of our expectation, you will meet us at the very point of our needs. You will answer all our prayer. You will visit us, you will touch us, you will heal us. And you will heal and bless our situation. Even our children and our children, children. Bless us. Thank you, Abba. We give you all praise. We give to you all adoration. We say thank you. Abba, thank you. Thank you. Abba, thank you. Yeah. Abba, Yahweh, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. And as we go, we pray 
that the weeks ahead of us, the days ahead of us, you will make it a victorious days. Even hours and seconds ahead, it shall be a victory times. We will not fall into any temptation. We will always say yes to you and to your will. To you be all the praise. Thank you. Thank you. I pray the name of Yahushua, our Messiah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Beautiful. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ah, thank you. That's beautiful. Um,